much. Well, right now, the General Assembly in full swing in its new legislative session at the South Carolina State House, one flo floor that is below where lawmakers are debating and working in Columbia. Governor Henry McMaster is in the early weeks of his second full term in office. Our State House reporter Mary Green sat down with the governor in a one on one interview to talk about his priorities for the year ahead. Looking back at the uh, the last six years here, for you maybe not what's been the necessarily the biggest accomplishment, but what's been the highlight of your uh, your time in this office? Well, one thing that I think has been very productive is that uh, the relationship between this office and the uh, legis the, the whole staff here uh, and the. House and, and Senate members is a very good one. Governor Henry McMaster will need to rely on that relationship with the legislature to accomplish his priorities for the year ahead. They include raising teachers starting pay from $40,000 to $42,500. The next budget proposal released this week would do that and give districts more money than they got last year. Schools then would have the flexibility to decide if they want to spend those dollars on additional raises above the state minimum or in other areas. What is your message to those districts that are already paying above the minimum? Should they be using that money to raise teacher salaries? Yes. We want to have the best teachers in America teaching the best children in South in America, and that's the children of South Carolina. This week, the House passed a bill that would allow people 18 and older in South Carolina to carry concealed loaded guns without needing a permit or any training. The governor told me if the Senate passes that bill and it gets to his desk, he intends to sign it. I know there's concern about it, but I don't, have, I don't share those concerns. Uh, I don't think everybody's going to run out and, and buy a pistol to, to carry it around. I think that the, the people that will are the, uh, the are law abiding. Uh, citizens who know how to handle firearms and uh, I think the, con the Constitution, the Second Amendment says you have a right and I think the legislation is right on point. That's a lot of confidence that the folks who are going to get these uh, get guns and go out are going to be no, responsible. Those, those aren't the people causing trouble. Anybody that's got a criminal record still got to go through that background check. The governor also wants to see bond reform legislation on his desk, saying South Carolina has a revolving door of repeat violent offenders. I'm asking the legislature to shut that door. If somebody commits a crime while they're on bond for the first crime, then they, they go back to jail, there's no bond, and they get five years extra on their penalty. McMaster also wants to overhaul how South Carolina picks its judges. They're currently elected by the legislature, but he wants the governor to have the power to appoint them instead. His is one of many judicial reform proposals that have been floated at the state house following the state Supreme Court's overturn of South Carolina's six week ban on abortion in January. What do you say to those folks who contend that all these proposals are just a knee jerk reaction to one decision from the Supreme Court, a very big decision with fetal heartbeat, but still one decision that Republicans disagree with. I know that a lot of people, in, in, including uh, myself, who have wondered if we, if it weren't time for us to change the way that we select our judges for the state. The most important thing that a government can have is the public confidence. When people lose confidence in their government operations and the government of, uh, officials, uh, we have a problem. We have a pro so the, the way that many of us have thought for some time to make that a better situation in South Carolina is to change the way that we elect those judges.